If you can't wait for the next How to Train Your Dragon movie, you're not alone. The films both have scores in the 90s on Rotten Tomatoes, and they deserve it. It's got a heartwarming story, dragons, Jonah Hill is a Viking, and did we mention dragons? With a third film, The Hidden World, coming out soon, we'll let you in on some low-key facts all about it. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to CBR and ring that bell to become a part of our notification squad so you never miss a video. Without further ado, here are some lesser-known facts about How to Train Your Dragon 3, The Hidden World. I've hunted every Night Fury, except yours. Hand him over. New Bad Guy In the first film, the bad guy is the Red Death, the ginormous dragon who threatens to eat the smaller dragons unless they raid the Viking village of Berk. In the second film, we meet Drago Bloodvist, a conqueror who hunts dragons and uses them as part of his attack force. In the third film, we have a remorseless dragon hunter named Grimmel, played by F. Murray Abraham. Now, F. Murray Abraham has been in a lot of films, and he's played a lot of bad guys. He's best known for playing Sadiati, the court composer and rival of Mozart in the film Amadeus. He's also known for playing Omar in Scarface. His characters are always ruthless but sophisticated, the kind of guy who does evil with style. Head of DreamWorks Animation, Chris Deferia, says there is a gentlemanly calm to this sinister role, one that dovetails beautifully with this iconic actor's immense range and talents. And that spells serious danger for our heroes, especially Toothless. Based on the trailer, it looks like Grimmel has hunted every Night Fury alive except for Toothless. If Hiccup doesn't hand his dragon pal over, Grimmel says he'll destroy everything you love. And according to an interview with director Dean Dubois, Grimmel hates the very idea of dragons and can't stand knowing a bunch of Vikings can live in harmony with them. A little much, don't you think? Does he even know what the internet does to trophy hunters? In any case, if Hiccup doesn't think fast and keep up the training regiment, he could lose his best friend. Toothless has a girlfriend. Toothless has a mate. It's looking pretty likely that Toothless will have a serious love interest in the hidden world. We caught a glimpse of the Light Fury dragon near the beginning of the trailer. We don't know much about the Light Fury and can't really pick out any parallels from the book. But those who don't know, How to Train Your Dragon is also a book series. But unlike, say, Harry Potter, DreamWorks decided early on to depart from the source material. The original script was very loyal to the book, but seemed too sweet and whimsical for the older, not quite big kid crowd. In the original book, for instance, Toothless is a small breed of dragon, a common or garden dragon. Also, the dragons don't start out as the enemies of the Vikings, just their reluctant servants. Those changes, well, changed everything. Also, the films make up a trilogy, while there are 12 books, which means we can't really look to those books to figure out what might be coming. But the trailer gives us some clues. It looks like our Light Fury friend has the ability to disappear in a ball of fire, and if it's the same size as a Night Fury, you can bet Hiccup or Astrid or someone will be writing her in this film. The creators won't pass that opportunity up. There were dragons when I was a boy. A Hidden Dragon World the other clue we get from the trailer, scratch that, the title, is that there's a hidden world of dragons. The question is, where is it? And is that where we find the Light Fury, Toothless's new flame? The euphemism works better for dragons than people. We can't really tell what the hidden world is, but at the very beginning of the trailer, we hear a forlorn hiccup say there were dragons when I was a boy. Where they went, only a few know. So it's possible that at some point in this movie, the dragons will disappear for good into the hidden world. It would make sense. Hiccup has tried to create a utopia in which Vikings and dragons can live together. From the looks of the trailer, it's working out in the beginning, sanitation issues aside. But maybe Grimmel's little hunting expedition will make the dragons think twice about living near humans, and will leave the Vikings of Berk and the wider world at large for this hidden world. That suggests Hiccup will keep its secret location from other people, or it's an echo of what's possible if Hiccup, Astrid, the Vikings, and the dragons don't stop Grimmel and whatever forces he's unleashed. But this isn't a fact about the hidden world anymore. It's a speculation. So, moving on. Oh, what? Do you want an apology? Is that why you're pouting? Dragon Flight Delayed one of the more startling aspects of How to Train Your Dragon 3 The Hidden World is the fact that it's been delayed for so darn long. The first film came out in 2010, the next film came out four years later in 2014. But in 2012, even before the success of How to Train Your Dragon 2, DreamWorks set an ambitious goal of releasing the third movie only two years after the first sequel, on June 18th, 2016. By 2014, that date had changed to June 9th, 2017. That's a whole nother year. Yikes, we could have been at the Academy by now, Uncle Owen. 
Then in late 2016, the release date got pushed up to March 1st, 2019. All of this means it will have been a longer wait between How to Train Your Dragon 2 and The Hidden World than there was between the first two films. But that should be okay. The How to Train Your Dragon movies have never skimped on the rich visuals, but based on the trailer, we're glad the director Dean Dubois took the extra time to get this final installment right. Trilogies are tough to pull off. If one of them doesn't live up to the others, it won't stand the test of time. So hopefully the delayed premiere of The Hidden World will be worth it. When we crack this mountain open, all hell is going to break loose. And my undies. Flashback to Dad. Stoic the Vast, Hiccup's dad, died in How to Train Your Dragon 2. He sacrificed himself to save Hiccup from none other than Toothless, who was under the mind control of one of Drago's bewilder beasts. In the film, he gets a Viking funeral, which, to be honest, isn't a bad way to go out. But Gerard Butler, who played Stoic, will be appearing in the hidden world. But how? Will he visit Hiccup in flashbacks? Is Stoic not really dead? Or maybe his ghost of sorts will appear? We have no way to tell for sure, but it's probably going to be good. Butler called the film beautiful, while Jay Baruchel says the film is by far the strongest of the stories of the three, and that it's the movie that the series requires and deserves, and it's the rightful third chapter or third act. Now, all actors are sorta obligated to say good things about the films they're in, but actors like good characters with strong emotional moments, so maybe those appearances of Hiccup's dad will give this film more weight and meaning. It's definitely looking like Hiccup is alone now and has to be his own dad from now on, and will be there to share that difficult journey with him. Let me show you. Messed up timelines. In the trailer, we see Hiccup with a beard. This is the part where we hear him lamenting that dragons used to exist in his youth, and that means one of two things. He looks very different from his younger self in most of the trailer. That tells us that this could represent Hiccup looking back on the events of the hidden world, or not. In an interview, director Dean Dubois said of that moment, Bearded Hiccup is indicated in the trailer, which is a little misleading because it doesn't speak to the main narrative of the story. There will be moments in the movie where we play with the timeline a little bit. Perhaps this tells us what could be if Hiccup and friends don't solve the main problem in the movie, namely Grimmel, but possibly other obstacles as well. Maybe it's a dream he has, a vision induced by some kind of magic. We know that Stoic the Vast will be appearing in some form in the Hidden Kingdom as well, so this could be a film that shifts perspectives and time frames a whole bunch. And that could make for a very interesting film, if they do it right, of course. They've done everything right so far though, so here's hoping. Eric is what you need to worry about. A chief protects his own. More responsibilities. When we last left Hiccup and Toothless, they'd each gone through a huge personal transition, and losing his father, Hiccup has now become chief of Burke. It's a paradise where Vikings and dragons can get along, but it's also a huge responsibility. Hooray adulting! Toothless, meanwhile, has become the alpha of all the dragons, which is basically a fancy word for animal president, and it looks like he might have a girlfriend. Both characters will have to do a whole lot of growing up to keep up with the responsibilities of adulthood, and that will drive the story forward. Dean Dubois suggested in an interview that the two won't always be together, saying it's like the story's on a dual path. It makes sense. That's what happens when you grow up. Your endless, carefree friendships get interrupted by love, work, and F. Murray Abraham trying to enslave and destroy an entire race of flying lizards. You can even imagine the two getting into a fight about limited time to hang out. But we can probably assume, based on the trailer, that they'll be fighting side by side, one on top of the other when it really counts. Because if we've learned anything from the How to Train Your Dragon films, it's that you can't separate these two for long. Ah, we did it! <laughs> New Tricks Toothless's new potential girlfriend, the Light Fury, has the remarkable ability to create a fireball, fly through it, and heat her scales up until they become a mirror, making her practically invisible. But what about Toothless? Has he gained any new skills? I mean, what have you been up to, Hiccup? How come you and Hiccup never thought of anything that awesome? Well, never fear. It looks like Toothless will have some brand spanking new abilities in the hidden world. What are they? I mean, it is the last film in the trilogy. They're not going to spoil what could end up being the peak of Toothless's abilities as we see them on screen. But director Dean Dubois has given away juicier details about other aspects of the film. So if Toothless ends up learning a new skill, it might turn out to be really important for the climax of the film and their fight with Grimo. Maybe the Light Fury teaches him her fire mirror scale trick thing. We'll just have to wait and see. But now we're just guessing, so we'll have to move on to something we really know about for sure. The Skrill. Bone Napper. Whispering Death. Animal Inspiration 
If you're an animator inventing your own species of monsters, in this case your own species of dragon, you're probably going to do some research on existing animals for a frame of reference. It's only natural because it's really hard to imagine a totally new animal, including the way it moves without some real world example. They did this in the film Jurassic Park, the Lord of the Rings films, and many more. The How to Train Your Dragon trilogy is no different. With How to Train Your Dragon, they had to make the animals sympathetic for kids, which means bigger, friendlier eyes that don't look threatening. In addition, different dragons emerged from different animal inspirations during the creative process. The Cloud Jumper dragon is based on an owl, while Toothless is based on a black panther, but also sort of like a mix between dog and cat, a very large dog and cat. But the creators doubled down on the research binge when choreographing Toothless's mating dance, which we saw in the trailer. The team incorporated the most hilarious outlandish bird mating dances they could find online. But because Toothless was the last of the Night Furies, the animators were sure to add an amateurish streak to his dance moves. He isn't exactly practiced after all. In this way, he's a lot like where Hiccup was in the first movie, totally unable to talk to girls and no one willing or able to help him. Thank you for nothing, you useless reptile. A friendship tested. In How to Drain Your Dragon 2, the friendship between Hiccup and Toothless is stretched to the breaking point. It's not exactly either one's fault. One of Drago's bewilderbeasts took control of Toothless's mind, causing him to kill Stoic the Vast, Hiccup's father. After the incident, Toothless flies off in despair, while Hiccup loses faith in his friend. But encouraged by his mother Valka, Hiccup manages to free Toothless from the grip of the bewilderbeast, and eventually Toothless leads the other dragons in driving it and Drago into the sea. The question is, will their friendship be tested? again. With the arrival of Toothless's new crush, the Light Fury, it's very possible. Who knows, maybe the Light Fury distracts Toothless at a critical moment, leaving Hiccup to fight Grimmel himself, or find his way out of the hidden world on his own. Perhaps Toothless's behavior will affect Hiccup's relationship with Astrid. According to the director, the Light Fury doesn't trust humans, and that means it might try to lure Toothless away from his human companions. If that happens at a critical moment, it could cause a break in the friendship of our two main heroes. And while we all hope for a good, fun ending, it doesn't mean it's going to be a complete happy one. We won't know if their friendship lasts forever until we see How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World when it finally comes out. So, what is the plan? And there you have it. What do you think? Did any of these facts surprise you? Are you excited for the movie? Let us know in the comments section below and don't forget to hit subscribe for more great videos from CBR. Thanks for watching.